Hello and welcome to Tech Deals 3GB versus 6GB GTX 1060. Which should you buy in 2018? Will these still play AAA games at high detail? 1080p and 1440p benchmarks in this video. This is an update to one of my most popular videos that I did way back in 2016. I'll put it right up there. No, don't go watch it. It's way out of date at this point. But back then, I looked at these cards and looked at the games at the time, and my advice was to buy the 3 gigabyte card. Who would have thought that we'd be in May of 2018 and a 3 gigabyte 1060 would be 250 and a 6 gigabyte 1060 would be 300 plus? They didn't launch at that price. They launched at 200 and 260 respectively. So here we are nearly two years post launch and they are more expensive than they were in 2016. Now I'm gonna give you some very specific advice later in this video as to which one I think you should buy. And I will briefly discuss the upcoming cards that are supposed to launch at the end of summer or early fall 2018, the 11 series of cards, which have been quite delayed at this point. A few quick notes about the test bench setup for all of the benchmarks you're about to see. The Ryzen 5 2600X CPU was used. It runs at stock clock speed on the included cooler, which effectively works out to a 4 GHz clock speed on all 6 cores, 12 threads. If you're looking for the deal, the value for the money in a gaming CPU in 2018, that is definitely it, and it will last you for many, many years to come. If you do streaming or content creation, the Ryzen 7 2700X is worth buying, but for purely gaming, that's really where the value is. We have 16 gigabytes of DDR4-3200, which runs just fine on the new second-gen Ryzen chips. It was kind of iffy on the first-gen, but the second-gen memory controller is much better, so DDR4-3200 is where it's at. Now, I have several GTX 1060 cards here. Actually, I have more than two. This right here is the PNY 3 gigabyte card. Two fans, one fan, doesn't make a difference at this level. There's no cooling issues because these cards only pull between 100 to 120 watts. They're not high draw cards. All of the tests you're about to see had the cards overclocked to 2 gigahertz or within 25 megahertz of that because it does vary because of boost. All of the GTX 1060s that I've played with run just fine at 2 gigahertz. They rarely run much further beyond that. 2.1 is a challenge, but 2.0 works pretty well. Out of the box, each of these cards have slightly different speeds, so they required slightly different boosts. Launch MSI Afterburner and simply add a boost of plus 50 or plus 75 or plus 100 to the GPU clock speed to get your GPU to 2 gigahertz. Linked down in the video description below will be links to Amazon and Newegg for everything that I show you in this video today, both the three and six gigabyte cards and the Ryzen 5 2600X, which is an awesome CPU. Now you can get one of the new X470 boards, which started about $140, but frankly, it'll install just fine on the B350 boards. If you buy a new B350 board today from either Amazon or Newegg, it should be with an updated BIOS. As long as they were manufactured around December of 2017 or newer, which is now almost six months ago, then the boards will actually support this out of the box. I want to talk to you about my partnership with Humble Bundle. This is a wonderful deal and a great value for the money and a wonderful way to support charity. You can get new games, older games, bundles. They have a monthly service. They have a store to sell Steam keys. Humble Bundle has been around for a number of years now, and it really is a great thing because it gives you the opportunity to support charity, support your favorite content creator, such as myself, and get great deals. You can see here there's a number of bundles. They rotate these around and cycle them. They are not just games. They're primarily focused on games, but the one you see right here is actually a book bundle, an ebook bundle. What a deal. You can get all these ebooks for really, really inexpensive. They have a store as well, and you can get all the same games you get on Steam and elsewhere, but a percentage of your purchase here goes to support charity, and you can often get the prices lower than going directly to Steam. Before we get to the benchmarks, let's talk about the differences between these two cards, besides the VRAM difference, which is obvious, 3 versus 6 gigs. There is a shader or CUDA core difference between the cards. 1,152 CUDA cores 
versus 1,280. There is an 11% CUDA core jump between the three and the six gig cards. So in theory, if everything was perfect, there'd be an 11% performance difference, but it doesn't work that way in the real world. In the real world, you're gonna see between a five to 10% raw performance difference in game benchmarks if the VRAM is not a factor. The six gig card is in fact faster, but the truth is, if you're looking at the difference between 72 frames per second on the three gig card and 78 frames per second on the six gig card, are you going to notice that in the real world? No, you aren't. It looks really nice on a benchmark chart where you're looking at graphs and you go, oh, well, I wanna buy the faster card. That is why the benchmark charts will include dollar cost per frame per second. Is the extra performance of this card worth the money? On a pure shader uh, basis, in terms of the raw compute power, not even close. If you are not limited by VRAM, there is no way in the world the extra 50 to $70 the six gig card currently costs is worth the difference. But the VRAM might make up for the difference because more games are now requiring more VRAM. So let's talk about that. There are many misconceptions about what you need and don't need in terms of VRAM on video cards. First of all, NVIDIA has memory compression technology. The textures and other details loaded into the VRAM are actually compressed on board via a very high-speed texture compressor. It works very well, much better than the 900 series did. And so even though it only has three gigs of VRAM, it can very effectively store four gigabytes worth of stuff. Same thing on the six gig card. It can effectively store about eight gigabytes worth of stuff in the six gigs of VRAM. This is why these cards are comparable in terms of storage to the four and eight gigabyte versions of say the RX 580 because of the better memory compression technology. Having said that, when they run out of VRAM, know your games and programs will not crash. What happens is, is the video driver then falls over to main system RAM and takes extra textures and details that don't fit into say the three gigabytes of VRAM and puts it into your main system RAM. Now, if you've got 16 gigs of RAM, you're generally fine. Eight would be limited here, but with 16 gigs, you generally are gonna have a couple of extra gigs free in most modern games for it to fall over into. No problem, so you only need the three gigabyte card. Well, the only problem with that is the GDDR5 video RAM on these cards is multiple times faster than your DDR4 RAM is in your system. It does make a difference. When you run out of VRAM, there is a noticeable performance deficit. I'm gonna show you that here in a couple of games in just a second. The question is, do you play the kind of games where the VRAM is an issue? The truth is most modern games in 2018 don't at 1080p high detail need more than three gigs of VRAM. I said that in that video back in 2016, and had you bought one of these cards back in 2016, you'd have spent the past two years enjoying it, not having a problem with the three gigs of VRAM at 1080p high detail. 1440p can be kind of sketchy and ultra detail as well, but then you run into performance issues because these cards don't really have the performance to say run Far Cry 5 at ultra detail. But that advice was then, and this is now. We are now in 2018. If you are gonna go out and buy one of these cards, the question is, do you now buy the three gigabyte card in 2018, or is it time to step up to the six gigabyte card? Now, before we get to the benchmarks, let me make this really, really simple. Get the six gigabyte card. The three gigabyte is enough today, but it isn't gonna last very long at this point. It might have another year of effective AAA gaming in front of it, but by the time we get to 2019, it's gonna run out of steam. Now, some of you might take exception to that and say, but wait a minute, back in 2016, did you not say to buy the three gig card, the six gig was pointless? I did, and I was correct, because that was two years ago. And so if you had followed that advice back then, you'd have gotten three solid years of use out of the card, which is about what you should expect out of a $200 level card these days. However, this is now 250, this is now 300, and this is now 2018. If I was buying either one of these today, I would spend the extra money at the current prices they're at to get the six gigabyte card. It's gonna last you probably another year, maybe 18 months beyond the three gig card due to VRAM issues. It does have 11% more processing power on board. And when you look at the current prices, the price jump for the longevity for maybe twice as long that this will be useful 1080p high detail gaming, I think that's totally worth the money. Had graphics card prices followed the normal spectrum, then this probably would be 150 at this point, this would probably be 200 at this point, and this would still be a little bit more appealing given the percentage price difference. But because they're above their launch cost in 2016, yeah, I really would buy the six gig card. 
With the conclusion out of the way, let me show you a bunch of benchmark testing and three different styles of charts here to show you why I came up with that answer. Now that does not make the three gigabyte card bad and at the right price with enough price delta, yes, I would still buy one, just not 250 to 300 because at that price difference they'd buy the six gig card. But if you find one of these three gig cards for say 200, yes, then it's worth buying. It's just at these prices. Now the first set of charts I'm gonna show you are frame rate charts, minimum, maximum, and average frame rates of the games tested. That's just raw information. The second chart is gonna be percentage difference. What is the actual percentage difference between these two cards? And then finally, dollar cost per frame per second. Please note, I'm assuming $250 for the three gig card, $300 for the six gig card. Prices change and vary constantly. That's what the links down below are for. If you find this for substantially below 250, it will make it a better value. If this is below 300, it makes it a better value. If it's above 300, it makes it a worse value. And so you have to actually look at the pricing and decide how far apart are they in price and is it worth the extra money? Generally at $50 difference, I'd buy the six gig card. At 70 plus dollars difference, difference, I'd consider the three gig card unless you want more longevity. But anyway, now on with the benchmarks. The first game we're testing is Assassin's Creed Origin 1080p high detail, 58 frames per second average on the three gig card, 67 frames per second average on the six gig card. Again, remember two gigahertz clock speed on both cards. Now here, the six gigabyte card is faster because of the CUDA core count increase. It does have more processing power. The question is, will you really notice the difference between 58 and 67? No, these are averages. Both cards go higher and go lower. Look at the minimums, 36 and 42, and then 94 and 101 on the max. Now this is the game's built-in benchmark, and that's why there are not 1% and 0.1% lows. The benchmark is not long enough to really have those make a major effect. You really need five plus minutes of gameplay for 1% and 0.1% lows to really show their true colors. The key point here is that both of these cards will play Assassin's Creed Origins 1080p high detail at about 60 frames per second average. If you have a 1080p 60 hertz monitor, set VSync on and it's simply going to run around 60 frames per second a majority of the time. This chart shows the percentage difference, average, minimum, and max between the two cards. Now here's what's interesting. The average and the minimum are more than the 11% CUDA core difference. Wait a minute, so we're VRAM limited. There must be something else at play. No, um, you won't see them here in this video, but if you look at the extended uncut version of the video, which will be posted after this that contains the full benchmark runs, we are using less than 2.5 gigabytes of VRAM on both the three gigabyte and six gigabyte cards. They are both running at two gigahertz. It is the same machine run back to back and it's less than three gigs of VRAM. So yeah, here's the difference. Because of the larger than 11% performance difference, the actual dollar cost per frame per second is closer than it's going to be in some of the other charts. $4.31 per frame per second on the three gig card, $4.48 per frame per second on the six gigabyte card. So the six gig card is still more expensive for the extra performance, but not by much. Please note 250 and 300 are the assumed amounts. If you're gonna pay more or less than either card, it will affect these numbers. Next up, we have the 1440p results. Now, these are not 60 frames per second, and ideally, you would not be trying to play 1440p on GTX 1060s. You can, but actually, medium detail probably makes more sense. 43 to 49 frames per second, again, is not a huge difference here. There is a bit of a VRAM uh, jump here. We're up to about three gigabytes of VRAM, but still, it's pretty close. What's interesting is that the percentages are way off compared to the 1080p results. The average is actually a very similar percentage, but the minimum is a much, much closer number, while the maximum is a much larger number. Dollar cost per frame per second is about the same as it was in terms of a gap and the spread, $5.81 versus $6.12. So at these prices, the three gigabyte is still the better deal, unless you don't consider 43 frames per second average to be good enough, in which case you need the six gigabyte. Well, actually, if you wanna play 1440p high detail AAA games at 60 plus frames per second, you need a 1070 Ti, frankly. Neither one of these cards is really meant for it. 
Moving on to Warhammer Dawn of War 3, 1080p high detail, there is very little difference between these two cards. This sort of game does tend to be more CPU bound than graphics card bound, the built-in benchmark is not all that demanding, and so at 1080p high, you can see here it makes very little difference. In the real world, 2-3% to difference in the average and minimum. There is a 7% difference in the max, but we're talking about 100 plus frames per second, so it doesn't really matter. Based upon those numbers, this should not surprise anybody. $2.87 is a noticeable decrease in cost per frame per second versus the 6 gig card at $3.37. If you're playing games that don't need the extra VRAM, the 3 gigabyte card is clearly the better value. Stepping up to 1440p, do we see a larger difference? No, not really. Actually, 59 to 63, it's a four frame per second difference. You will never in the real world notice a four frame per second difference average. That is a rounding error. Yes, the six gig card is faster, but that is such a small difference. It's just not gonna show up outside of a benchmark. Ironically, the percentages here are larger than at 1080p. We've got a 7 to 8% difference in the average and minimum frame rates. We've got an 11% difference in the max. But again, we're talking about a 4 frame per second difference. This chart makes it look like a bigger difference than it really is. And again, to the surprise of nobody, $4.24 versus $4.76. The price has to be closer for this to make sense. Far Cry 5, a new 2018 release. How well does it play on the two cards? Well, at 1080p high detail, yeah, basically there's almost no difference. 69 to 73 frames per second, again, is a four frame per second difference. You're never gonna notice that in the real world. In fact, in the game's built-in benchmark, both cards are over 60 frames per second on a minimum, 61 and 62. If you're playing this game on a 1080p 60 hertz monitor with V-Sync turned on, at 1080p high detail, you're basically getting a smooth 60 frames per second. Now, of course, this is the benchmark and not the game. I would expect portions of the game with a lot of action and explosions going on to dip below 60 frames per second at times. It's still gonna be a great experience. This should not surprise you. Game companies develop games that will run on current hardware, not future hardware. If Far Cry 5 came out and wouldn't play at 1080p high detail on one of the most popular cards on the market today, the GTX 1060 3 gigabyte card, they'd have millions of unhappy customers. So this actually makes sense when you think about it like that. It's gonna be another year or two after the 11 series launches before it really starts to become an issue. I mentioned in the real world you had about a 5 to 10% performance difference between these two cards, 5.8% difference at the average. It's even less at the minimum and max. Truth be told, at 1080p high detail, you do not need the 6 gigabyte card today, but it will come in handy in the future. So again, how much are you willing to pay for that future proofing? $3.62 per frame per second versus $4.11 per frame per second. When you don't need the VRAM, the 6 gigs makes no sense. Again, just like Assassin's Creed Origin, 1440p high detail is not really meant to be run on any of the 1060 cards. It will do it, but we're below 60 frames per second on the average frame rates on both of these cards, 45 and 50. It would be playable, but the minimums would certainly drop. We're down at 38 and 42, but there's probably places in the game where those would drop down into the low 30s, if not high 20s, when there's a lot of action going on. Not all the time, mind you, but it certainly would happen. If you wanna play Assassin's Creed Origins, Far Cry 5, if you wanna play these kind of games at 1440p, please get yourself a 1070 Ti. It really does make the difference. Here we see an almost pure performance difference between the cards, 11 and 10.5% on the average and the minimum. Yes, it's faster, but what about the dollar cost per frame per second? From this point of view, it still doesn't make any sense to buy the 6 gigabyte card. The 3 gigabyte card costs less. However, if you're spending $5.56 per frame per second, is $6 per frame per second really that large of a jump? Because it is in fact faster, the truth of the matter is you're paying a premium, but not a huge one. And this is exactly why I do recommend that you buy the six gigabyte card, as I mentioned earlier in the video, because you're paying a bit of a premium in current games, but you're buying yourself potentially double the useful life of the card into the next generation, whereas the three gigabyte card is gonna run out of gas. Now we finally have a game, Forza Motorsport 7, 1080p high detail. The average is 81 frames per second on the three gig card versus 118 on the six gig card. Wait a minute, you say that is not a 10% difference. That is a huge difference. Yes, 
as you will see in the next video where I actually do the complete uncut recordings of all these benchmarks, that is VRAM right there. We are completely VRAM limited and the three gigabyte card simply doesn't have enough. Now main system RAM usage is higher because the textures and details are falling over into the main DDR4 RAM, but DDR4 is dramatically slower than GDDR5 on the actual GPUs. That's what you're seeing right here. It's even more dramatic at 1440p, which I'll show you in a second. There are not very many games right now where 1080p high detail do this. The number can be counted on one or two hands. This number will increase over the next 12 to 18 months, which is why I said that at current prices in 2018, the six gig card is better because you're giving yourself much more time where the card is useful. Two years ago when they first launched, this didn't matter as much, but who knew we'd be here with cards above launch price retail two years later without a replacement. I would, however, like to point out that even the minimum frame rate is above 60 frames per second on the three gigabyte card. Yes, it's VRAM limited, but 73 frames per second, last time I checked, was greater than 60. So if you have this card and you wanna play at high detail, it will play at over 60 frames per second. It just plays at a lot more frames per second on the six gig card. And here we have a percentage chart that finally shows a real difference, 45% increase on the six gigabyte versus the three gigabyte, a 33% increase on the minimum and a whopping 52% increase on the max. We finally found a game with a six gigabyte card. It's not required because 60 frames per second will still run on the three, but what a difference. And to nobody's surprise whatsoever, this chart is finally swapped. $3.09 per frame per second on the three gig card versus $2.54 on the six gigabyte card. So this is what you can expect going forward in the future with more and more AAA games where more VRAM is needed for 1080p high detail gaming. Now you can always turn the textures down, you can always turn the detail down and get it to fit and get it to work. A three gigabyte card will not be useless in 12 to 18 months. You will just have to start compromising on the detail settings sooner. If you thought 1080p was a big difference, holy smokes, 1440p high detail. 55 frames per second average on the three gig card, 101 frames per second on the six gigabyte card. That is a monster difference. The same relative difference carries over to the minimum and the maximum frame rates as well. Side note for those of you curious, I did go in and manually set every detail. I am aware that in Motorsport 7, when you have things set to dynamic, the game plays around with settings. I did go into custom and I did manually select every item to high. MSAA is turned off because MSAA is completely destructive to performance, but everything else, including Entroscopic, was up at 16X and everything else was set to high, or for example, the uh, car's lights were set to on in the rain, that sort of thing. But this right here demonstrates when a game not just runs out of VRAM, but massively runs out of VRAM. At 1440p high, this game uses a ton of VRAM, which you'll see when I show you the uncut benchmarks. Almost 84% performance increase between the three and six gigabyte card, 93% performance increase at minimum and 77% increase at max. This, as I said, will become more common going forward. You can already see the difference at 1440p high. There you go. To the absolute surprise of nobody whatsoever who's paying even the least bit attention to anything I'm saying, yeah, there's this. But of course, this just represents what happens when you run out of VRAM and the performance falls straight off a cliff. I do have another chart for you here, and this is a bit different than the other ones I've shown you. World of Tanks Encore is a separate downloadable benchmark for the new 1.0 big launch of World of Tanks. It gives you a score rather than a frame rate. Yes, I could run fraps and do it that way, but rather than do that, I'm just showing you the score because then you can run the program yourself on your own computer and see how big of a difference it is. If your computer, for example, scores 5,000 at 1080p, then these cards are more than triple the performance. If your current machine scores scores 10,000, then these cards are only about a 50% increase. Let me help you out here. Even the three gigabyte GTX 1060 is fine to play World of Tanks at 1440p at ultra detail, 60 plus frames per second without any issues whatsoever. So the actual frame rates here are almost beside the point. 60 plus frames per second, you'd be getting 100 plus frames per second at 1080p. World of Tanks isn't that demanding, but I'm including it because it is kind of actually a beautiful game now that the 1.0 release has come out. 
Now that was a whole ton of information and some of you were gonna look at those charts and go, wait a minute, except for a couple of games, the three gigabyte card is still really, really close to the six gig. Why in the world are you recommending the six gig card? Because we're in 2018 and this doesn't have three years of life left in it for 1080p high detail AAA gaming. It's got another year-ish in front of it, in my opinion. Generally, that price point, the $200 price point, where it was at launch, buys you three years of gaming. But we are two years into that three years of gaming. But because these are still the premier mid-range cards from NVIDIA, because we still have no information on launch date of an 11 series, I'm doing an update to show you what modern games look like and to show you a situation where the VRAM really does make a difference. It depends upon what games you play. But unless you know your games really well, unless you know specifically which games are going to have VRAM issues and which won't, that's why I think the safer bet in 2018 is to get the 6 gig card. It is worth noting that a GTX 1070 Ti is close to 500 these days. If this is over 300 and you're looking at a $200 or less price jump to a 1070 Ti, that actually might be worth considering because those are more than 50% faster in terms of compute power than this, have eight gigs of VRAM, and will possibly last you twice as long as this will in terms of AAA gaming. But that's a whole nother price class. That is five plus hundred dollars, and that's not where most people buy video cards. But I will be doing an upcoming performance comparison between the six gigabyte card and the 1070 Ti just to show you what difference it makes, at least in today's games. To some extent, spend more, future-proof yourself more, buy a higher-end card, and you can have more years of use in front of it. A 1080 Ti, for example, might seem overkill for 1080p gaming. It is to some extent today, unless you want really high frame rates, 144 frames per second or more. But the truth is, if you buy one, as expensive as they are, you just have that many more years of gaming in front of you before you have to replace it. I'm not recommending that today because of the current prices, but it's worth noting that basically with video cards, buy as much as you can afford, you will grow into it even if you don't need all of it today. I have mentioned the 11 series several times in this video. Those look like they're coming out sometime in the next three to six months, maybe August, September, possibly October timeframe. I don't think it'll be quite that long, probably end of the summer. It looks like they're gonna be a refresh. From the leaks that have now come out so far, it does look like they're gonna be called the 11 series, not the 20 series. So 1180, 1170, and 1160. They are not, however, gonna be the huge jump in performance that the 10 series was over the nine series. It looks like they're gonna be anywhere from 20 to maybe 30% more powerful at each tier. That's not confirmed, it's all rumors and leaks at this point, but given the current GPU situation and the fact that these are still selling for over retail, those are not going to be priced cheaply and they're gonna sell out on launch day anyway. So unless you're prepared to put your pre-order in the minute those go up and just buy a reference card on day one, if you can find one of these at a good deal, they may still be worth buying. And of course, if you need a graphics card today, well, three to six months from now doesn't help you. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with that big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section and as always check the links in the video description. Links to Amazon and Newegg for everything here, the CPU, the graphics cards, the whole nine yards. Those are affiliate links, they do support the channel. If you appreciate the video that I've done here and all of the many days of hard work to put these together, please consider supporting me by using those links when shopping, I would greatly appreciate it. Further down a field are links to Twitch, Twitter, Patreon, Floatplane, and a couple of other things down there. Please go check those out. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time.